Researchers at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln are studying whether sugar beets can be a viable component in beef cattle diets. Largely grown in the state's panhandle, sugar beets can sometimes be unusable for human consumption or too plentiful in supply. Nebraska Extension's Carla Jenkins has worked with sugar beets in gestating beef cow diets and is now looking at their use in growing and finishing cattle. We recently talked with Carla to learn more about the results from that work and the background of why researchers are trying to utilize sugar beets. So we're researching sugar beets in beef cattle diets because there are times that the sugar beets are not going to make the standard necessary for human consumption. And so then we have some leftover sugar beets that need to go somewhere and that creates a little bit of a uh, problem for the sugar factory as well as the sugar beet grower. And that may be a, a good benefit for the beef cattle producer if they know how much to put in it. Um, and then the other reason is that there are times that we just produce more sugar beets than the government will allow to, sugar to be made from because there's also a certain amount of sugar that has to come from sugar cane. So if we have bumper crops, we can get a little on the long side of the sugar. So tell me about the process to use these in a diet. So to use them in a diet, we need to get them chopped up because they are the complete sugar beet, which is different from beet pulp, which most people are familiar with, and that's a byproduct after the sugar has been taken out. Beet pulp has about 45% neutral detergent fiber. Sugar beets, as a, the whole sugar beet only has about 15, so it's got characteristics that can impact the rumen much like corn rather than a fiber source. So we want to chop those up because uh, a whole sugar beet might be choked on. And then um, we need to get them out of the ground and get them stored and processed. And so while there's nutritionally, they could easily be fed um, fresh as a chopped sugar beet, we really can't store them that way very long. And so what we've done is we've mixed them with, the, so it's about 90% sugar beet, chopped up sugar beets, and 10% wheat straw, ground wheat straw on an as-is basis and packed that into an ag bag and we did one in, uh, one small group in a bunker and just try to get all the air out of it to store it until we could use it um, because the sugar beets need to be preserved as quickly as we can. What results have you noticed over the last couple of years here? So when we did a beef cow study with gestating beef cows, we replaced um, corn. 20% of the diet was either corn or in the other diet, 20% was the sugar beets. And they performed very similarly um, to each other. So it was a good energy source for the cows. Um, the study that we're currently undergoing is a growing study. And it's also comparing sugar beets to corn as an energy source, but in this diet, it's 44% sugar beets or no sugar beets, and um, then it's an alfalfa-based diet. And we just got that started the week before th or Thanksgiving or the week of Thanksgiving. In what industries could this be a viable option? So beef, cow, uh, dairy as well? Yes, so in our area, obviously, we want to know where it might fit into the growing beef cattle rations and the finishing rations, and so we have a finishing study planned after this growing study, but you're absolutely right. There are regions of the country that struggle to get in corn or to grow corn. It's expensive for the transportation. They can't grow good corn, and so in those regions like Arizona and California and Texas, they've, used, they've grown the sugar beets and included them in the dairy rations as well and actually seeing a bump in milk production. And so if there's a way our producers could maybe raise the sugar beets, um, might be an, an, instead of just raising them for sugar or for this, or the ones that come up as surplus that we can't use for sugar, if they can grow that crop cheaper than they can grow some other energy crop, they could possibly incorporate those into the dairy rations across the border from us along the, the Colorado-Nebraska border. There's quite a few dairies coming in there from California, so there might be an opportunity for our producers to supply those dairies with some sugar beets as well.